chapter 15. Ma and Ba sat in front of a small fire that Ba built. Their disappointment at not having found Min Lee forced them to admit their exhaustion, and they slept under the canopy of tree branches during the day, leaving the silver goldfish as a guardian. By the time they'd awakened, it was late afternoon, but neither of them made any attempt to move. Neither spoke, but both knew they were unsure whether to go forward or go back. While the sun burst into multicolored flames on the horizon, its last wave goodbye before surrendering to the night, Ma handed Ba a bowl of rice porridge. Neither of them spoke as they ate, both thinking about the goldfish man's words. Should they let Min Lee try to change their fortune? Should they stop looking and, like the goldfish man said, trust her? Ba sighed. Trying to find Min Lee is like trying to find the paper of happiness, Ba said aloud to himself. What paper of happiness? a voice said. Ba looked sharply around. Who had said that? He looked at Ma, but she continued to stir her porridge, obviously unaware. Ba shook his head. Perhaps his weariness was making him imagine things. Tell the story, old man. She's listening. The voice spoke again. She won't admit it, but she wants to hear it too. Ba looked around again. It seemed like the voice was coming from the goldfish. He looked closely at the bull. Was it firelight that made it glow like that? The fish stared back at him calmly, as if waiting. So Ba took a deep breath and began the story. The Story of the Paper of Happiness Once a long time ago, a family grew famous for their happiness. It seemed odd that this would happen, but they were truly an unusual household. Even though aunts and uncles, cousins and grandchildren lived together, there was never a crossword or an unhappy noise. All were polite and thoughtful to each other. Even the chickens did not fight each other for feed. It was said even the babies were born smiling. Stories of their happiness spread like seeds in the wind, sprouting and blooming everywhere, until finally even young Magistrate Tiger heard of them. Remember, he's the bad guy. Even though he had just begun his position, this was before his son was born. The bellowing, roaring magistrate was already called Magistrate Tiger. Impossible, he scoffed. The stories are exaggerated. No family can be that happy. But even so, he was curious and sent an emissary to the family to observe. The emissary returned, odd. Your magnificence, it is just as the stories say, he said. I observed the family for a full moon, and not one sad or angry word was even whispered. The adults are loving and faithful, the children are gracious and respectful, and all honor the grandfather with an esteem that rivals the gods. Even the dogs do not bark, but wait patiently to be fed. The family circle is one of complete harmony. That's impossible! the magistrate said, astonished. But as he thought about it, the more he began to wonder, was the secret that, was, what was the secret that the family had? They must have some magical charm or hidden knowledge. And this began to irritate him. He began to covet the family's happiness. I am the magistrate, he thought. If there is a secret to happiness, I should have it. So he called his emissary to him and presented him with an empty, heavily encrusted chest and a company of soldiers. Return to the family, the magistrate tiger ordered, and tell them, I want the secret of their happiness put in this box. If they do not do so, have the soldiers destroy their home. The emissary did as he was told. When the troop of soldiers surrounded the house, the family looked fearful. But when the magistrate's demand was announced, the 
grandfather smiled. That is easy enough, he said, and he had the, the trunk brought into the house and returned in moments. It is done. I have put the secret to our happiness inside the box, he said, and you may take it. We hope it serves our magistrate well. The emissary was slightly surprised at the ease of his task, but he could find no objection, so he turned the soldiers and the box around and began to travel back to the palace. The emissary knew the magistrate would be impatient for his return, so the soldier, soldiers marched through the night with only the light of the moon to guide them. The treasure box, lying on a platform carried by four, man, four men, seemed to grow. However, as the ground grew rocky and steep, a sudden wind blew, like the mountain itself was yawning. One of the soldiers stumbled into the rising dust, and the box crashed to the ground. The lid of the box flew off, and like a freed butterfly, a single sheet of paper fluttered out. Get it! The emissary shouted at the soldiers. Don't lose the secret! But despite his yells, the paper seemed to be able to escape the soldier's flailing arms. One soldier almost caught it, his very fingertips touching the page, but another sudden wind burst through the air and stole it away. Silently, the emissary and the soldiers watched the paper lift higher and higher in the night sky until it overlapped the moon and disappeared. The emissary had no choice but to return to the palace with an empty box. As he relayed the story, Magistrate Tiger, not surprisingly, was enraged. You lost it? A piece of paper? What was on it? He said. Your magnificence, the emissary trembled. I felt the secret was for your eyes only. I did not read the paper before it was lost. However, as it was in the air, all could see that there was a single line of words written on it. What did the line say? The magistrate demanded. I don't know, magistrate, the emissary said. But there was one soldier that almost caught it and was closest to it. Perhaps he was able to read the line. So the soldier was called in, and very humbly did he bow. He was a little more he was little more than a boy and had only recently joined the magistrate's army from a small poor far away village. You said the magistrate. You were the only soldier close enough to the paper to read the line. What did it say? The boy flushed again and his head touched the floor as he bowed again. Great magistrate, I am your poor servant, he said. I was close enough to see the line on the page. However, I cannot read. I do not know what the line said. Magistrate Tiger scowled with irritation, and the emissary and the soldier shivered. I, I did notice something, the soldier said. What? the magistrate demanded. There was only one character on the page, the soldier said. The line was one word written over and over again many times. One word, the magistrate snarled. His anger seemed to burn deep in his eyes. One word is the secret to happiness. It was a trick. The family must have thought they could deceive me. Emissary, gather all of my troops. I personally will get the secret of happiness and punish that family of lowly men. So the next day, with Magistrate Tiger and his entire army and his entire army prepared for destruction, the emissary led the way to the home of the happy family. But when they arrived, nothing was there. No house, no chickens, no sheep, no family. Instead, there was only a flat a, only a flat plain as if the whole home had been scooped from the earth. Magistrate Tiger scowled at the blank form at the blank ground with rage and vowed to punish the family for their disrespect. But while he glared, the wind blew and covered him with a grayish green dust. As he stood like a green covered statue, he felt like the sky were laughing at him. 
and that's the end of the story. So, I think, Min Lee, like the secret word in the paper of happiness, Boss said, is not meant to be found. He glanced at Ma, and while she did not meet his gaze, she made no objection either. And tomorrow, Ba continued gently, we should return and wait for her to come home. Again, Ma said nothing, but barely, perhaps only because he was looking for it, she nodded. Ba nodded back at her and quietly took some rice and dropped it into the fishbowl. 